but help help spark that. I mean, he got out the pocket twice. He made a good play on third down. Then he got out the pocket another time. And, you know, we had him covered, but then he started making plays with his legs, as he usually does. So we didn't try to sway away from the game plan. We told him to stick with it, and we'll start keeping them in the pocket, and then them guys can start making plays. That was basically it. When you look at the Raiders, uh, what, what about their offense uh, do you uh, have to focus on? And obviously they got some speed with rugs outside too. I mean, they got speed and power. They got a huge offensive line. I think the running back is outstanding. Jacobs is one of the best in the league. He's got great footwork. Uh, he's always falling forward on tackles. He can catch out of the backfield. He's a complete back. Then they got Waller at tight end. Obviously, Witten's been playing a long time, but Waller does a lot of things for him. He's an X, he's a Z, he's a slot, he's a fullback, he's a tight end. And they got a huge offensive line. They play a great power game, and that's without even bringing up Ruggs and Aguilar and everybody else on that team. And I think Carr is playing very good football. And, you know, they got a heck of a team. It's going to be a good challenge. Thanks, Coach. Next question will come from Scott Reynolds. Hey, Todd, I wanted to uh, to ask you about the play of Derek Carr. What have you seen from him for him to be completing such a, a high rate of passes this year, 73%, with 11 touchdowns and one interception? What has he done differently this year that's got him off to a hot start? Well, I didn't, I didn't get to watch him much last year. I just know he's, he's delivering the ball on time. He's very accurate. Uh, he has command of the offense. He knows exactly where everyone's going to be, and he's making the correct reads, and he, he's throwing the ball. Thank you, Coach. Yeah. Next question will come from Greg Allman. Hey, Todd, come, coming off the game that you guys had as a defense, um, as much as that helps with their confidence, what, what do you do? You need to do a lot to keep them in check to not let them feel too full of themselves because they've got another game Sunday that can completely offset all the good you did last week, right? We got a lot of things to get better at. I know we made plays Sunday and we're happy we won the ball game, but we're still scratching the surface on a lot of things, trying to iron out some things. So every week's a new week for us. You forget about it on Monday and you go right back to the next week, which is the game at hand, which is the Raiders. And I got to do a good job of understanding that. It seems like they did a good job of that in the other direction in terms of after the Bears game and things getting away there, they let that things go. Do you feel like the group group is good at doing that and moving on? We're getting there. I mean, it's a long season. Like I said, every week you got to forget about it after the next day, win, lose, or draw. So you try to treat it the same and prepare for the journey and not just the race at hand. So we're ready for to try to get ready for the Raiders this week and keep it moving from there. Thanks, Doug. Yeah. Next question will come from Omar Ruiz. It's um, just curious dealing with some offensive line COVID issues and had them practice for a couple of days. How close do you guys monitor that, you know, to considering, you know, the personnel, um, you know, issues that would be there, whether, you know, some guys are in or not. i um, just curious kind of your evaluation of that. You don't monitor it for the personnel. You monitor it for the COVID, you know, you want to be healthy first and foremost. You want those guys to be healthy first and foremost. And, you know, you try to see. They played a lot of guys, different guys this year, and they can swing guys around. We just got to be ready to play our game, and we know we're gonna they're gonna feel the team that's trying to beat us. So we got to be ready to play. Thank you. Yeah. Next question will come from Luke Easterling. Todd, when we talked to Coach Ross a minute ago, he he mentioned how you know the the young guys in the secondary are are kind of playing beyond their years and, and their their intelligence is allowing you guys to kind of throw a lot of stuff at them because they can handle it. What can you say about the the development of those guys? I think six of the top guys on your depth chart are 23, 24 or younger. What is, how much does it help your scheme to be able to rely on young guys like that on the back end? Well, they're football players and they, they have a year under their belt. So they're obviously a lot smarter coming into the second year, have a lot more experience and, Last year, they were trying to learn just the defense, what we were trying to do. This year, they know the defense, so they're starting to understand what offenses are trying to do to them. So they're starting to apply that, and, and they're doing a lot of film study, so they're starting to play very well. And heading into to last week's game, I think one of the bigger questions was, you know, could the run defense continue to, to be what it has been without Vita Vea in the lineup? What can you say about the, the way you tried to deploy the guys that you did have and, and take advantage of their strengths and how they responded and executed. 
I thought they worked hard. I think we let two runs get out of there that we need to clean up. But for the most part, as a group, I thought they worked hard trying to cover up. You don't replace Vita. You just try to re try to play differently. And we tried to play a little different. And those guys played well in what they did with Nacho and Will and Sue down there. And then Ledbetter came in to help out. I thought they did a good job. Thanks, Coach. Next will be Tom Krasnicki. Hi, Todd. I want to ask you about Steve McClendon, obviously a guy you're very familiar with from your days with the Jets. So tell us what he brings to this team on the field. And, of course, he's got a, a great reputation of being a great locker room guy as well. Well, he's not just a great locker room guy. He has a great motor. Uh, he's a very good nose tackle. We need some depth down there at that position because it's a long season. Uh, he brings energy, he brings toughness, he brings strength to us, and he'll fit in quite well with the guys. And I'm assuming he's going to make his debut on Sunday night. He's been practicing and he looks good. Well, he hadn't practiced yet, so he got to clear COVID stuff. Oh, gotcha. Next will be Scott Reynolds. Hi, uh, Tom just stole my question, uh, Todd, but uh, I noticed you're, you're rocking that sweet beard this year. Uh, is, what's, what's inspired you growing the facial hair? And, and uh, obviously Bruce has, uh, quite the beard himself. What, what has he given you in terms of compliments on that? Oh, he hasn't given me anything in terms of compliments and my inspiration. <laughs> um, during COVID, I watched a lot of Fresh Prince, so I kind of got my Uncle Phil <laughs> beard working for me, and I saw an Idris Elba movie, and I got the little six, nine o'clock, five o'clock shadow working, so I decided to keep it, look a little older and a little more mature, so <laughs> nothing behind it. <laughs> That's outstanding. Jokes, not nothing behind it. <laughs> Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it. Yeah. Next will be Greg Allman. Hey, Todd, back to uh, McClendon. I just want to ask you how involved you were with that. Obviously, you guys knew you had taken a loss with Vita. I just want to ask you, like, as soon as you hear that it's a possibility, is it something you're, you're standing on the table asking, hey, please do that? Or how involved were you in that process, I guess? Oh, they asked me. Yes, I stood on the table for them. <laughs> we need depth down there. And like I said, it's a long season. You rarely get through the season with the guys you have. So it's a long season. He's a quality player. He could help us. Not now, down the line, you know, and he was a good guy to get for us. Anytime you can get a good player and a good person, you try to get him. He had to hustle up to Tampa just to get there by midnight Sunday to give himself an extra day with you guys to be able to be there on Friday. How much does that mean when you see somebody that obviously wants to get to a new place and, and then chip in as soon as he can like that. That's the kind of guy he is. I mean, he's a heck of a teammate. He's a heck of a guy. He's a heck of a leader. And when he goes after something, he goes 100%. And that's what you appreciate about him. All right. Thanks, Coach. Next will be Leo Haggerty. Coach, when you're watching film, are you looking at blocking schemes and, and route combinations, or are you looking at individual techniques, or is it both? We look at everything from blocking schemes to how the quarterback reads to route combinations to hash marks. So we, we cover everything and try to see what we can get away with. We got a lot of coaches, a lot of guys do a good job over there trying to come up with things and see things so we can get back and put together a game plan. All right. That's all we have time for. Appreciate the time, Coach. Thanks.